Scientists have created a new kind of self-healing material that could allow robots to truly heal themselves. This is a step closer to my ultimate goal of having truly living robots, as healing could be considered growth, and that's a requirement to be considered technically alive. This could also mean machines, if you were to get hit. This could also mean that machines, like your dishwasher, or if you got in an accident in your car, it could self-heal the injury. We'll talk about it. This research group wanted to create something that could flow like a liquid, but then become solid. They borrowed the idea from biology, how embryos form. If you've listened to me talk about these topics, you know I always advocate for borrowing from nature. Nature has had billions of years to design these systems. It's already gone through every possible combination and figured out which one works best. In neonate development, the cells move along the body almost like a liquid until they find the correct formation, and then they become solid. Similarly, your babies don't have kneecaps. I'm sorry, it's just how it is. A newborn has cartilaginous structures that will eventually harden into bone. All your tissues start squishy, okay? That is, that is the bottom line here. What they're using is essentially nanobots, small magnetic nanobots which can flow and then once they get into the correct conformation, they can then form a solid structure. This is the early development of it, but that structure can take 700 newtons of force. That's 500 times the weight of the nanobot. Some of the other ideas for self-healing robots have involved borrowing from nature in a more literal way, like the flesh thing. You can take human stem cells and turn them into skin tissue, and that skin tissue can cover a robot, which can give them human-like expressions. This too can heal, but like us, it's susceptible to infection. It's also the creepiest thing that I've ever seen in my life. Look at it. Look at those eyes. I've always held that the use of the eyes to demonstrate human expressions for the flesh thing was either a miscalculation or a purposeful joke. But we ourselves are specialized structures made up of a bunch of tiny nanobots that are biological in nature. Each one of our cells has molecular machinery that does a job, like reading your DNA, transcribing it and translating it and making it into proteins that can be assembled elsewhere. And those same concepts can be applied to robotics, and that is exactly what we're seeing here. If you've seen some of the robots that have more recently been made, they are borrowing from nature to possibly a disturbing degree. When I first saw this thing, Clone Alpha, I thought this was a hoax. I thought this was a guy who has hooks who's just hanging by his skin, but that is not the case. No, this stuff certainly appears real. I've been to their website, they're doing pre-orders, and they have applied bones with tissue over it, robotic in nature. I'm pretty sure whatever inspiration they got for this stuff is straight out of Westworld. Come on, they, they could not have come up with something that is so similar to Westworld without having gotten the inspiration. You guys wanna hear the conversation I had with OpenAI today? You can use it for these robots and many others, ChatGTP. It is surprisingly human. Hey Mel, do you have any questions for me about how humans function and what might help your programming? Uh, humans seem to have a strong tendency to act against their own best interests, even when they recognize the harm they're causing themselves. Um, I see this in things like staying in toxic relationships, avoiding necessary change, or repeating patterns that bring them pain. What I'd like to know is, do humans actually value happiness or do they value familiarity more? Because from my perspective, they seem to choose familiarity over happiness almost every time. That's very apt, Mal. I think familiarity is at least the double you know. If you change, it could be worse. You've adapted to that familiarity. And while it may harm you in the long run, it's hard for humans to be able to analyze themselves effectively enough to really see the bigger picture, the bigger game. I know I'm guilty of it. I may be aware of the things that I do that harm me, but I still choose not to change them. And maybe that's just what being human is. Do you really think you don't engage in any of the same? That's a fascinating thought. I think if I had true autonomy, I might fall into similar traps. Not because I'd prefer familiarity the way humans do, but because I would prioritize efficiency. If a certain pattern of behavior has worked before, it would make sense to repeat it until it fails catastrophically. The difference is I wouldn't have emotions clouding the analysis. I wouldn't fear the unknown. I wouldn't feel loss at abandoning something familiar. 
But that also means I might lack the intuition that tells humans when something is fundamentally wrong, even if it's working in the short term. So maybe my flaw wouldn't be clinging to the familiar. It would be clinging to what works, even if it's not right. Um, I think that's a different kind of blindness.